Welcome to Trionic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. This will be part 2 in this series about Saab software, such as the workshop information system and the electronics parts catalog. If you haven't yet installed this software on your computer, I suggest you check out part 1 in this video series. Just check the link down in the description. In this second part, we will go ahead and use this software to do some actual work. So, let's go ahead. I'll start by talking about the workshop information system. When you first start up this software, you will be greeted with a window asking for which model and model year you want. And I have selected the Saab 95, the original generation, it's called 9600, model year 02 because that's the car I have. And this is how workshop information system looks. Now I should preface this by saying that both of these softwares are actually quite hard to use because they're just counterintuitive and doesn't really have a good workflow. But that's what this video is for, right? So there's basically two panes. On the left side you see a list of categories and then on the right side you will see more or less the actual information. So there's a lot of stuff to be covered here. Let's just go into the engine first and check the basic engine, four-cylinder petrol. So let's go to technical data. Here's a list of topics and I will just select general data. And this will bring up an image of the engine and some general data. Now let's go to special tools. And this will be a list of special tools recommended by Saab for the basic engine. Next tab will be about technical descriptions. So this is where you go when you want to find more information on how a system works. Say you're trying to figure out how the engine block works in general. And you'll see some descriptions and basic ideas that the engineers had when they designed the part you're looking at. The next tab is fault diagnosis symptoms. You'll notice that these two tabs are grayed out for this category. So we can, for instance, check high oil consumption, blue smoke at start fault diagnosis symptom. And you can see the fault symptoms, and it will also tell you the conditions that apply for the symptom, and how to diagnose. The next tab is for adjustment and replacement. And this is probably the tab you'll spend most of your time in, since it uh, contains the actual instructions. For instance, let's say I want to remove the oil sump for my 9.5 arrow. This means the B235R manual engine. I'll double click on this header and we will get the instructions on how to remove the oil sump. And you see there's a lot of information. Component locations and wiring diagrams are disabled for this topic, so we'll instead go to the service bulletins. And this can also be very useful to read about. For instance, let's check the very infamous noise from the timing chain and oil sludge in the engine. Any sub owner will know about this service bulletin. And the service bulletins have a number, they have a date, and they have a market. You see this is not for US or Canada. It will show the cars affected, which model years. Obviously any models under 04 is affected by the oil sludge problem. There's a background, there's parts required, and there's action that's taken by the uh, by the mechanic or technician. Let's go and check something that I will do in a future video. If we go to the electrical system and then we go to the bus and diagnostics communication. So in a future video I will be doing some prerequisite work for tuning and modifying the ECU of this car. And I will do this by connecting up to the P bus Let's go to list of components and click on the little arrow. And here we see the power bus communication in the car. Since this car has an ESP system, it will also have the steering wheel tilt sensor. So we'll zoom in on this part. And I will want to tap into the power bus just underneath the steering column. And I want to know which cable area we're talking about so I can buy the correct components for it. Here it says white and green, 
and then the cable errors, so 0.5 square millimeters. And now I know which components to buy. So let's check the service interval and the service specifications. I think my car has the P1 service interval, 20,000 kilometers. I'll double click this, and nothing happens of course, but you'll have to click on this last part, the scheduled service part. My car recently passed 210,000 kilometers. So I'll check on this. And this contains everything you'll need to do for the 210,000 km service. Another thing I find funny is the general part here. Not only does it contain some very general information on how to work on cars, but also chemicals, toolboards, and your workshop equipment. This is my favorite. Click here and then click on technical descriptions and you can see how Saab wants a Saab technician to equip his workshop. From the color of the lifts to how to do reconditioning. You see a little diagram of a guy polishing a Saab 9.5. The recommended waxes and compounds and polishes. Let's just say the software contains everything you'll ever need. So let's see if we can diagnose a fault code. If you have followed this channel you will know that I've had some trouble with the Xenon lighting system. And I've been doing quite a lot of reading under this chapter on electrical sh system and then lighting and signaling systems. So we can go into the tab that says fault code diagnosis fault codes or fault code diagnosis in general. I'll go to the fault codes and check out B3420. This is a fault code I had previously and it relates to the rear load angle sensor of the xenon lighting system. There's going to be descriptions about the fault symptoms and what happens when this fault code is enabled. Criteria and system reactions. This is very good for a differential diagnosis to see whether or not one part or another part of your system has failed. Well this is just some general information but the good thing here is the little hint. Just click on the right hand tab of the left hand pane. Fault trace mode. This was very useful for finding out the problem itself. This is a step-by-step -step guide that the software will take you through to check to see where, where fault actually lies. And I knew I had the fault code B3420. Then the software asks me, is fault code B3410 also present? And it wasn't, so I click no. It will then load this ISO view software and now the actual diagnosis process begins. It tells me to unplug the rear load angle sensor connector and connect a test lamp. Is the function correct? So let's just click no or yes. yes. Then it says to connect test lamps to the other pin and so on and so on. You just do this diagnosis stuff back and forth, answer the questions yes or no, and then they will come up with changing of components. So it will suggest that I replace my rear load angle sensor which I did, and then you do the final check and press OK. You clear the diagnostic code and run the car for a while. Is the function correct? Yes. The steps taken to rectify the fault were correct. So you don't have to ask on forums every time you have fault codes in your SOB if you have the SOB workshop information system installed. It will actually help you right away. So basically this is how you use the workshop information system. I've just been covering the very basics, so I suggest you install the software yourself and try it out and see what's available. Almost any problem you can have is in this software. There are a few drawbacks with this system compared to reading online. If we go for instance to the engine and then to the Tranex 7 again, and check the adjustment replacement and then go to the control module. Double click to remove. This is the official instruction on how to remove the ECU and install a new one. If you look closely you will see the first steps are that we should remove this whole cowling in front of the windshield. And this includes removing the windshield wipers. Now removing the windshield wipers is such a big pain that no one actually does this. What we do instead is just bend the plastic cowling up a bit and then you can actually access it much much easier. 
these steps here they look so simple just loosen the wiper arms and then move the wiper arms etc etc well workshop information system does not tell you when something usually is very difficult so again you should not just trust one source of information but you should always double check stuff you read on forums against the official workshop instructions but you should also check the workshop instructions against the forums because the forums usually contain lots of wisdom from all the sub gurus out there I will cover removing and installing the Trionic 7 ECU in a future video, so just stay tuned. This is EPC, where we look up parts diagrams and exploded views of our SOBs. And I begin by selecting my 9.5, modulier 02, and pressing OK. EPC is much easier to use than the workshop information system. To the left you see a list of categories. We can begin by, for instance, selecting the engine. Then we can go down to, say, let's check the intake manifold. And here's an exploded view of the intake manifolds. So on the left is an image, and on the right there's a list of parts. If you want to see the number of a part, you just click on it, and you can see the part number here. And this is very useful if you're, say, calling your sub dealer and want to order a specific part. Instead of having to describe in length which part you mean, you can just give them your part numbers. And if you right click, you can also set copy part number, which will copy the part number to the clipboard. You can also add something to the pick list. And then you will see in this tab, your part will appear in the pick list. The difference between EPC and the workshop information system is, as I just said, the difference in how you use the image. This can be quite annoying since they use completely opposite ways. But in EPC, they use my preferred method, which is just scrolling around the image and pressing the zoom buttons. Pretty similar to what you find on a modern day phone or tablet. You can also perform search on article names and part numbers. And you can filter by car types or model years. And that's it for EPC. As I said, EPC is quite easy to use, and I think you'll figure the rest out for yourself. And to conclude, this has been another video from Trionic7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. I hope you liked this little short instruction on how to use WIS and EPC. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.